These questions are from OpenStack, the book, the, our textbook, and the questions asking about the um, uh, show some inequalities involve some integrals. Well, remember that there is this property or, or positivity of the uh, integral. So let me write it here. It says what? It says that if f of x is greater than g of x for all x's on the interval a, b, then the integral of f of x from a to b is going to be bigger than integral of gx from a to b. In other words, uh, integral uh, respects inequality. And this is a special case of g is equal to zero. Uh, if you g is zero, then positive function, integral of positive function is positive. Here, I, I have f this. Look at the function f. Function is x squared minus 6x plus 9. This is indeed x minus 3 squared. This function is always bigger than equal to zero. So the integral of that function always, everywhere, in particular, from zero to three, is going to be bigger than equal to integral of the function zero from zero to three. Integral of zero function is always zero. So that's, that's how we prove that inequality, that integral of this guy is always going to be bigger than equal to zero. How about the other one? Okay, so I have two integrals, both integrals going from one to two. Right away, that tells me that the integral that the interval that we're dealing with is one to two. So we have to show that two function, one function is bigger than another function on that interval. So I'll take this one as f, and I'll take this one as gx. I claim that fx, which is 1 plus x squared, is bigger than equal gx, which is root 1 plus x. It's not true always. It's only true what I care is it must be true on the interval zero so from one to two. Well, let's, let's first try to prove that one. So I want to show that this is true. If that's true, I can square and I get one plus X squared must be bigger than this guy. Oh, sorry. And then from there, you can see that I can cancel these two and get x squared must be equal to x. But if that's true, it will imply that x squared minus x must be bigger than equal to zero. I know how to solve this guy. This is an inequality and I can use the tab sign table to solve it. How do we do that? So x squared minus x is x times x minus one. If set it equal to zero, you see that x is either zero or x is equal to one. So that means that, well, on the interval zero, one, the function, uh, oh, actually I, I can do the sample points there. Here must be positive, here negative, here positive. And as I can see on the interval one to plus infinity, x squared minus x is bigger than equal to zero. So it's not only true for the interval one to two, it's also true for all the bigger interval, one to infinity. x squared minus x is bigger than equal to two. If that is true on the interval one to two, I can 
do reverse the operations that I did. I take X to the other side. I add one to each side. I take square of the both sides. Square root uh, um, is an increasing function and I get what we have. So this is proof of the claim. We prove that on the interval one, two, root of one plus X squared is bigger than or equal to root of one plus X. Then using the positivity of the integral, we know that integral of F, which is one plus X squared DX on the interval one, two must be bigger than or equal to integral of one root of one plus X from one to two. And that is how we prove that. The third example is a little bit different. One side, there is this integral. The other side is just a number. What is that integral there? So this integral of cosine t, let's just look at the graph of cosine t. The cosine t has something, the graph is like that. Yes, but on the interval, negative pi over four to pi over four, by the way, values of the cosine t at negative pi over two and pi over two, both of them are the same thing. It is root two over two. And if we restrict ourselves only on this interval, you see that the graph of cosine t is bigger than equal to root two over two. So what we show here is that cosine t is bigger than or equal to root two over two on the interval negative pi over four, pi over four. You may say that how I do this thing in general, well, find the absolute mean of that function on that interval. That's the, the most systematic way of doing this kind of question. But here it was easy. I could do just by looking at the graph of the cosine function, which I'm assume, assume that you all know by heart. But in general, if, if you're trying to show that a function on an interval is bigger than a number, find the absolute max of that function on that interval and show that that's bigger than or equal to that number, okay? So if that's the case, then uh, the positivity of integral shows that the integral of cosine t dt from negative pi over four to pi over four must be bigger than or equal to the integral of root two over two from negative pi over two over uh, two pi over four, from negative pi over four to pi over four. Well, this is easy to evaluate because this is integral of, I actually can do right with this. So you just look at the graph of this function, root two, over two, it goes from negative pi over four to pi over four. And that is a rectangle. And I can find the area of that rectangle, which is root two over two times the length, which is pi over four minus negative pi over four. And that if you compute, you get that root two over two times pi over two which will give you root two pi over four. That's the right-hand side. The left-hand side is integral of negative pi over four to pi over four of cosine t dt. And that is how we prove the inequality given by this example.